Hello, I'm Ivory, and thanks for joining me today. The topic is cutting spiritual ties. First, I want to say hello to my listeners in Kingston, Jamaica. I'm excited that you're here. I hope to have an opportunity to visit your beautiful country and your city in the future. I'm getting ready to do some traveling, and I'm excited about that, too. So thanks for being here. Thanks for supporting the show. This is a pretty extensive topic, so I'm going to jump right in here. Um, this is about releasing energetic binds. So as we move through our lives, growing, learning, evolving, we must necessarily let go of that which no longer serves us. We get ourselves into the worst spiritual and physical binds by not doing that. When we choose to let go, we create space, and that space gives us potential possibility. Cord cutting is a very common practice in both spiritual and secular traditions. The practice of cord cutting helps to recover energy that has been lost and to reestablish healthy energetic boundaries. So let's explore this practice. First, I want to talk about cutting energy cords for creating new space. It's kind of like you get rid of things in your house and then you have space for if you want to bring in things that bring you joy or you just want to bring in serenity and some minimalism. When we enter a relationship with someone, whether it's family, friend, intimate partner, a business colleague, someone we have regular meetings and dealings with, or even an individual you meet in passing, you develop energetic cords. Now, these cords are not necessarily bad. They help us to form connection and understanding with one another. When we are connected energetically, we perceive on a much deeper level and we can tune into the energy of another person. We're all energy beings. I'll say it over and over again. It's all science. While we tend to interact with the world through our five physical senses, the truth is that our primary means of relating to others is energetic. As we move through our lives, we must necessarily let go of things. And so it's not a bad thing to come to that conclusion. It can be sad, and I'll talk more about that later. Why do we even form chords with people? I've had people ask me that, and I, I thought I should address it today. Negative patterns help us to grow and evolve as we strive to move beyond them. And that's why I think we form negative cords as they contain the negative patterns of a relationship. And so in dealing with those aspects, we expand and grow as human and spiritual beings, which is all of our primary underlying life purpose to grow and evolve. When I was studying spiritual healing a long time ago, I was also taught we both we have both negative and positive lessons in every relationship with someone. The positive experiences are, are reflected in a cord of unconditional love, and the negative lessons form an energetic structure too. If you process those negative lessons and take the learning from them, you can remove the negative connection and change how you feel about it. And that's a really big part of this, changing the energetic connection. So can you feel if someone cuts an energy cord to you or if you cut one to them? When you cut a cord, you're cutting the cord on your end only and the person you cut the cord with will not feel it. However, uh, as an empath, I feel it when I cut a cord with someone and I suspected somebody cut a cord with me and I was fine with that because I was thinking of cutting it with them. If a person is really sensitive, an empath or just a sensitive person, they will likely note the lessening of energy from you, but they won't know what caused it. It's not painful. It's not shocking. They'll just notice a lessening of energy. So how do you make the transition? Let's talk about this letting go. I mentioned on a show many shows ago how back in the in the 90s, I was working in the field of mental health at a psychiatric hospital, and there was several people there who loved to create drama. And I and most of the people there were fed up with it. And one time a friend had printed out a poem called Letting Go, and I actually saved that. I have it all these years later, and we put copies of it all over the facility, and things did start dying down. 
Um, but letting go is a really important process for many reasons. We're going to talk about specifically with letting those people go who aren't good for you. You can think this as many small steps of transition and change. Transition is change. Change is not bad. It's just different. And change happens all around us all the time. Each day we are evolving. We're learning and growing beyond what we were before. Holding on to what would prevent us from moving forward is detrimental to your personal and spiritual growth and your health. If we were to continue accumulating all of the leftovers from every past thought, action, and experience, we would be weighted down heavily by the burden of all of that. When we transition from one way of being to another, which all of you are doing or you wouldn't be here listening and watching this now, whether that's via relationship with another person or simply how you relate to life, it's necessary to let go of what is no longer helpful. And that's true for everything, things, uh, passions, hobbies, jobs, relationships. We're talking about people today. In terms of relationships with others, we tend to hold on to that much more than is healthy for us energetically, physically, or even spiritually. And I'm going to tell you later in this episode how to know this is happening to you, just so you can identify it with certainty. Cutting energy cords helps to move through transition without the burden of carrying the weight of the past. It frees us to move forward with lightness and a sense of openness. And I chose this background for a reason. If you're watching this on YouTube, you see this beautiful meadow with daisies and a bright sun rising because it opens up your life. It brightens your life. It cleanses your soul, your spirit to do this process when you need to. So I want to talk about combating an energy deficit. Um, it's hard enough in the world right now. There's so much dense energy that we're trying to rise up to, to keep our frequency high and keep our, our spirits and our sense of hope alive. We don't need to hang on to unnecessary heavy energy that's pulling us under, that's making us drown in that heavy energy. So cutting energy cords doesn't apply just to past relationships or relationships that are draining you. You can also choose to cut cords in your present relationships, even those that are great for you, as a way of continually cleansing the energy between you and creating space for new. So as an empath, something that I have done in the last couple of years that's helped me immensely is when I start to feel drained fatigued, hopeless, sad, overwhelmed, I stop myself immediately and say anything that is not coming from my own energetic field must leave my energy right now. And I'll tell you, it is like something comes in and just sucks all that away because it's me absorbing it from the general energy in the world right now. And sometimes from the people I've been around and you, that may be helpful for you too. So I was moved to share it with you. I'm sure it'll help somebody. You can visualize an energetic cord as a tube connecting you to another person with energy flowing within the tube. If the cord is depleting you, the energy is flowing away from you. If the cord is feeding you, energy is flowing towards you. And in a healthy relationship, it's going back and forth. You're giving each other energy. So when you'll know, because when you're around a person that's healthy for you, you'll feel better after you've spent time with them or even talked with them. And somebody who's not, you're going to feel drained. And maybe it's something they're going through. It may not be a permanent thing. Anybody can be draining when they're going through a rough time. Cut them some slack. <laughs> I've been there. At times, this energy flow can seem very helpful. And you can share your energy with someone who seems to need it. And you can receive energy when you feel depleted. But you need to watch out for the potential energy imbalance that occurs when you maintain this connection too long. Or if you're giving your energy when you don't have the energy to give. That comes up in my sessions so often. And I'm always so proud of my clients and students who are telling me about setting boundaries. And, and it's not about the reaction of the person they set the boundary with, that's on them. That's not, a, that's not your problem. But setting boundaries is a way of protecting your energy as well. 
So even after a relationship has ended, it can be a long time after it's ended, you maintain these energetic cords and they can be so subtle that you don't even know they're there. However, the accumulation of cords for many people and the slow depletion of energy over time creates an energy deficit. So here's some signs that you have unhealthy cords between yourself and somebody or plural somebodies. Energy levels are depleted. Feelings of general lethargy, depression, or unexplained sadness. Feeling of being stuck or unable to make a decision. Obsessive thoughts about another person. You just can't get your mind off of them. Speaking often about another person, often in a judgmental or deprecating way. Lowered immune function. You're getting sick often. Unhealthy habits and addictive behaviors. Seeking comfort in excess, such as smoking, binge eating, drinking, drugs, sexual activity, and even seemingly healthy habits, such as over-exercising. You can become an addiction. So here's seven reasons why you may need to do energy cord cutting. This is not an all-inclusive, but it covers most of them. Number one is toxic relationships. The reason that I see most people desiring a cord cutting is that they cannot completely disconnect from a toxic relationship. This is a bond that is harming you in some way, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. It could be a current romantic relationship or some other type you're having a hard time letting go of. If you've been in a relationship with a narcissist or a psychic vampire, you're definitely going to need to do some cord cutting. So, it can also be that the person's no longer physically present, so they may have moved far away, but the energy is still there. And honestly, as, as a medium, I see people who have a cord connected with their departed loved one that they adored, that they had a wonderful relationship with, but it is keeping them from living. I mean, it, you can grieve hard as long as you need to, but if you're still not able to function two to three years later at all, then it's time to maybe start cord cutting. You'll never forget the love and memories of that person, but it'll free you to heal fully and live. And your spirit and your loved one who's in spirit will be so thrilled that you do this because they would not want to do it, have any, any part of causing you to not heal fully and live fully. Uh, maybe you're still thinking about a person all the time, or they're constantly reaching out to you. It's hard to have your own space and to establish boundaries. You typically feel bad doing that for some reason, that it makes you feel unloving and unaccepting of the other person, even if they have been abusing you. Making excuses for the other person's behavior keeps the energy cord strong. I did it. I did it in a relationship with two very toxic people, no more. Sometimes it may take another person telling you that you're in a toxic relationship for you to see what's happening. And almost all the reasons I'm going to list points to a deficiency in your personal power. You'll need to consciously let go of that cord and any hooks that might be in you from this other person before you can feel you have your own space and get your power back. And that's so important. Number two, you don't have your own identity. Your identity and sense of self may be wrapped up in someone else, and that is called codependency. This is where you might find that you're too linked up with an organization, a political party, a team that identifies you, a person. Without them, you feel less significant. The energy cord can also be related to a partner or spouse if they have an important role in the community and you feel your identity is linked with them. This role of being their significant other or belonging to a certain group may define you in your mind and your authentic self is being hidden or lost. Number three, addictive behaviors. If you can't imagine living without someone or something in your life, then too much of your personal power is connected to them. There is a cord preventing you from having sovereignty, from being in control. If this speaks to you, then you may want to consider releasing the cord. 
You can try it yourself. If you have difficulty with that, let me know. I can help you in a 15 minute session. The immense emotional investment you have in this connection can make you feel depressed and empty when you try to heal addictive behaviors. So having someone watch over your progress is a very good idea. It doesn't have to be me or any other practitioner. It could be a good friend, a family member that you trust. They can also help you process what's happening underneath the addiction and to identify the root of it. If you come to somebody like me, a therapist or another spiritual practitioner, number four, you're easily manipulated. It's likely you have an energy cord if you're easily influenced or manipulated by others. You may feel like you have less control in your life and that they're directing it for you. This is where there's not just a bond between you, but it's more like a hook in you and they're dragging you along. To get your personal power back and feel sovereign over yourself, you'll need to release that hook and dissolve the energy bond. Number five energetically drained. Feeling drained physically and emotionally and getting sick a lot is a symptom of power loss. And that's true in spirituality and shamanism. And it can also be evident of having an unhealthy energy cord. You've heard of energy vampires and narcissists, right? While there are certainly people who can take advantage of you, the problem is with your lack of boundaries and power. So you can put up resistance and a block to that. The solution is removing the energy cord and building your power again so you can feel whole, complete, and experience true health. Number six, stuck in the past. Are you constantly thinking about a person from your past or an event that happened long ago? This obsession with the past keeps you from living fully in the here and now. If you feel you can't be fully present, there may be an energy cord linked to that past person or event. This can also be wrapped up and mingled with the other reasons I've already mentioned, such as toxic relationships, lack of identity, and more. I mentioned being stuck in the past as a separate thing because if you notice this more than others, and it requires a lot more self-reflection to identify this. Number seven, you're having nightmares. This may be surprising, but having bad dreams or recurring dreams can also indicate that you have an energy cord with the spirit of another person. I have, I have can tell you that um, you can try to brush it off if you're having bad dreams often. I know a lot of people don't take their dreams seriously, but this is a very strong cue that you're too linked up with someone else. You would benefit from this deeper energetic work to regain your autonomy with the added benefit of sleeping better at night. So let's talk about how you can prepare yourself to release energy cords. If you feel that one of the reasons I talked about or a sign I mentioned applies to you, I highly recommend you do cord cutting. But first, it's a good idea to consider why you have this cord in the first place. It serves you in some way. There are many reasons why someone is reluctant to cut cords. And it's understandable when there's hesitation. Your heart needs to want this. It needs to be a conscious decision to cut cords. Otherwise, it may not work or it may not be complete. And for that reason, I suggest doing a cord cutting meditation. Bringing mindfulness into this ritual can help you gain wisdom from experience and growth. So I like to guide people through the cord cutting sessions um, when they have difficulty. If we've already done a cord cutting session, and it comes back, then I know that they're reluctant to really let it go. So uh, you can look up these meditations on YouTube, meditation to prepare for cord cutting. It's really about just being absolutely sure you're ready and willing to cut the cord, that you're ready to leave that in the past and step into your power. Because if what you're gaining from the cord is more important to you than your power and sovereignty, it won't work. So I want to talk about cord cutting, cord cutting rituals, how to release energy cords. While we are a culture that likes to think our way through things to regain the energy that we've lost through cord connections, we must engage energetically. It is an energetic process. There are a few ways, actually many ways, to cut cords and establish energetic boundaries. I'm going to present a few to you. One is taking a salt bath. 
Salt helps to cleanse your energetic body, brings you into a state of balance. Even beyond that, wow, I'm a big fan of ionic detox foot baths. And, and if you feel like you're really exhausted, like you've really gone through a lot of toxicity with someone or multiple people, I would get one every three days until your energy comes back and then a couple times a week and then weekly. Uh, you may, you'll, you'll know if you, if you go too long, your energy will start to fade again. And you're probably an empath. Number two is smudging. The ritual of cleansing with smoke is one that purifies the energetic body and helps reestablish connection with the divine. You can do that with sage or Palo Santo. Uh, three is journaling. Big fan of journaling. Write out everything that you've been wanting to say to the other person. Don't hold back. Share your frustrations and your desires. And after you are complete, you may choose to burn the writing. I like to tear it into tiny pieces and then burn it. Like, And when I say a ritual, I just mean I'm doing it with intent, mindfully. And you can also tear it into little pieces and flush it. But you don't, don't leave it where they'll find it. Uh, it could really cause more problems. And don't give it to them. It's just for you to purge this out of you. So the fourth is visualization. I'm a big fan of this too. In your mind's eye, visualize the person you want to cut a cord with. And big. I like to make it big, shining silver scissors. This is how I used to do it. So you can cut the cord. And you begin by connecting to the energy of the divine, the source of all creation, God, your higher, your higher source. See the energetic cord that connects you with the other person. Feel the energy draining from you. And then with intention, you visualize yourself picking up those big silver scissors and cutting the cord between you. And you witness as the energetic cord recoils back into both you and that other person. Take a moment to anchor the experience by feeling the recovery of energy you have and thanking the other person for the role that they played in your life or continue to play because you are learning from them, even if it's not good. You may choose to speak the following blessing after the practice of cutting cords. You could say you could say this or something like it. It never has to be word for word what I say. I now sever and release any and all energetic cords that do not serve my highest good. I release you and I release me from these binds. All cords are destroyed across all dimensions, times, and planes, never to return. I hereby banish these energetic cords and recover now all energy that was once lost. My energy flows back to me, filling me once again with vitality and creating now a peaceful energetic boundary of love and light. And so it is. After you've spoken this blessing, spend some time sitting in quiet meditation, feel the energy that you have reclaimed and take some time needed to just reintegrate. Imagine yourself now being cloaked in a luminescent blanket of energetic protection. This coating of light is your energetic boundary. See and feel how this boundary helps you to maintain your highest level of energy. Intend that this boundary remains in place as you step confidently forward into your day. I want to tell you a little bit about some of the powerful experiences I've had with cord cutting. So the first one, I learned it uh, after my divorce from my first husband, who was a sociopath, literally a sociopath, not my opinion. And he was uh, continuing to abuse my daughter and I through the mail, a uh, long 12 page legal page, terrible, terrible, toxic mail that I stopped giving to my daughter. They were so painful. And I decided I, I was I had to do something about it. And I told my first spiritual teacher, Belinda Howe, about this. And she taught me cord cutting. And I sat down and did exactly what I just went through with you of cutting it with the scissors. And the letter stopped. And I actually sent him a blessing. He had remarried quickly. They moved out of state. And I sent him a blessing that he would enjoy his new life, that he would find happiness, that he would find peace that he would leave us alone as much as possible. Um, we never had any more of the nasty grams from him. Uh, it's not like everything stopped. My daughter still wanted to visit him, but he got better and better. I did this a few times. He got better and better. And then he passed away many years ago. She was still a teenager at the time. 
So it stopped the abuse so that she could begin healing, uh, just getting away from him. She lived with me the bulk of the time. The second one was an abusive business landlord who I had left the building, but they were harassing me. Um, I, when she continued to harass me about things that supposedly I had done, I did cut, I did a cord cutting and, um, I had to do it a couple of times with her. She's quite dark and that stopped. Like it just stopped. It's been, I would think five years now. I haven't heard anything, maybe six years. Let's keep it that way. The next one was uh, an associate who literally became possessed. And I, I think I've talked about that on the show. Um, it got so bad. It was frightening and nerve wracking to have her in the business. Um, she's long gone from the business, but um, I had to do a cord cutting because she, that thing inside of her, when it, when it would take control of her was being really horrible to me and other people and customers. And it was creating a real dark energy that was the last thing we wanted. So I did a cord cutting. And as I did my intention, the prayer, I said, and please have her make a decision to leave this business and have it be in the best interest of all parties involved. And that's exactly what happened. And she's just stopped. She stopped and she moved on and, and she left the business and, and, it, and it wasn't an easy process, but it, it did work that she decided to leave, which is what it had to be for reasons I'm not going to delve into. The last one I really thought about was my ex-boyfriend who was a dark person. And he, after the breakup, he was harassing me and my spiritual mentor. Every time she had an event, he would show up with his then girlfriend and they were harassing her. They were sending nasty emails to both of us. And I did a cord cutting with him and his girlfriend um, because I needed to heal. I'd been through a lot and I needed to heal. I needed to be in a space where I could let my energy just be mine, not have that pulling at it. And I was getting crazy things in the mail, just all kinds of stuff. So I did this and he didn't show up at any more of my mentors events. The email stopped. I was still getting strange mail addressed to him and things attached to like my car that he never had a association with just different things. So I did it again, one more time. And this time I saw that cord retracting and I actually visualized the lock going over mine. So he could not reattach to me again, because I certainly was not reattaching to him and it worked really well. So in closing, I just want to say, only you can know if you'd be better off cutting cords with a person. You can cut them and then reattach later if the person's no longer toxic for you, or if it's a matter of you being drained from other things and you can't take their energy right now, you can reattach it later if you want to. Uh, you can join my Patreon page, The Angel Room, free for seven days to learn the problem with some cord cutting techniques, why they don't work or why they don't last, and also learn the two most effective ways to permanently disconnect a cord. This is important to know. So join me over there on Patreon. I want to thank you for being a part of the show today. Thanks for listening. And next Sunday, the topic is be the type of person you want in your life. I'm really excited to share this with you. So in the meantime, may your angels surround you. May your angels protect you every moment, every day of your life. I'll see you next week.